Um, so introductions, as I said, I'm going to do a level set in terms of what is IoT to make sure we're all on the same page. I'm going to talk about the good things about IoT, and I'm going to talk about the bad things about IoT. Then I'm going to introduce this concept of social IoT and what that means. Um, and I'm going to talk about how, so, uh, how IoT is impacting people and how people, in terms of how people work, will impact IoT architecture. So IoT is basically any other things, it's everyday devices connected to the internet providing high, some highly useful data about the world around us and about ourselves. Okay, that's what the Internet of Things is. Why is Internet of Things important? So this is one of my favorite charts. It's actually from, it's actually Gartner, who produced this chart. The bottom green blue line is actually the number, bottom, my the bottom blue line represents the number of uh, people connected or devices connected to the internet, cost of devices like laptops, mobile phones, the things that you guys would think about in terms of internet, okay? As you can see, that line is relatively flat. So those are human centric devices. The number of devices connected to the internet that have no human interface, right, that's the green line. All right, so the forecast is by 2020, there will be three to five times the number of devices connected to the internet as there will be people. How many of you guys are in IT in general and work in the IT space? A few of you? Okay, the reason why this is important to you is because within the next three to five years, somewhere between 50 and 60% of IT spend will be spent on internet of things. Okay, so if you want the next big industry in terms of IT, it is IoT. Okay, now a lot of people would sit there and say that social is more important than we do always talk about social networking and all this kind of stuff like that, right? But the reality of it is, there's been several studies done by Gartner that say that IoT will surpass or triple the amount of investment that it has compared to social networking. You know, a lot of people talk about IoT, and there's a lot of great opportunities um, coming up in terms of IoT. Gartner reckons that the actual economic value that the Internet of Things will have will be in the trillions of dollars. Okay. Um, there's also lots of one of the biggest industries of subverticals that uh, in terms of IoT is the medical industry. So you can actually say that the Internet of Things will start saving people's lives. Right? Uh, I know people who have pacemakers that are connected to the internet that upload data to the doctors and the doctors can monitor that. Okay? They are talking now about certifying uh, the wearables so that some wearables will actually provide data such that people can use it as a preventative medicine capacity. All right? So IoT will actually save lives. Um, it's also going to improve service levels. Okay? You think about the IoT connected device that automatically identifies that it has a mechanical difficulty Right, and goes out to the internet and you know schedules a work order, you know, if it's an industrial device or it's a home device and says, I have a problem, please fix me. Right? That's going to improve service levels. It's also going to make things faster. Okay? I'll give you some examples of that in a minute. Ultimately, it will also reduce a lot of costs. Not in the short term, but in the long term it will reduce a lot of costs. So there's lots of great things about IoT, and hence why everyone's really, really interested in it. And probably one of the one of the biggest things people are focusing on these days. There are, however, what I would few what I would refer to as a few clouds on the horizon. Um, you can't tell you first. 75% um, of businesses, so one of the issues that um, are on the internet of things is it's basically kind of the wild west right now. I can't remember the statistic, but the amount of investment that's going on right now in terms of venture capital on IoT in Australia is huge. Um, I'm part of the IoT Association of Australia, and they have a new business stream, which there are a few people here participating on stream. And there's literally hundreds of businesses that are IoT that are just about but the problem is, because of this proliferation of all these different technologies, there's no standards. So it's the wild west people building things. And what Gartner is saying is that basically by 2020, most businesses will have three to five different IoT architectures in their business. Which means that probably most of the cost of actually deploying these solutions are going to be to consultancies to actually integrate them all together. Because there are no standards. So they're going to have all these different solutions, they're going to have to integrate them all together, so it could be spent price consultancies who <laughs> right, will make lots of money. <laughs> they, you would, they just say, I hope so. <laughs> um, another interesting statistic, 75% of IoT projects will take upwards of two to three times as long as originally planned. This is another interesting one. Um, by 2020, there'll be a $5 billion, $5 billion black market in fake IoT data. Okay, so people actually faking IoT data for various business purposes. Five billion. 
And for those of you who are in IT security, or are interested in IT security, right, by 2020, something like 25 to 30% of all IT security spend will be on IoT. Okay. And I think I did, I did a presentation last month on IoT security. That's a whole other kettle of fish that I could get into about all the issues related to security around the Internet of Things and all the challenges and that kind of thing. So, moving on to the concept of social IoT as a concept. So, as I said, the way I look at this is it's kind of like a circle. Um, there's IoT that impacts your social networks, which impacts people. So, there's the impact of IoT on people. And then there's looking at people and how they work, right, and then applying that to IoT. Okay, and I'll describe you what I mean about that in a minute. But the perfect, for the purposes of my presentation, I'm going to talk about one, and then go through that, and then I'll talk about the other. Okay? Imagine this world. I'll throw a few statistics at you. Okay, by 2020, there'll be over 50 devices in your home connected to the internet collecting data about you. Okay? Another statistic. Right now, for those of you who are in big data, the third biggest spend on big data these days is around IoT. Specifically around geospatial data. So there's all kinds of businesses right now that are using the geospatial data generated from your mobile phones and your other devices, like my little GPS-enabled wearable, to figure out where I am. That's happening now. Okay. And the next statistic is IoT privacy right now is characterized by we were in 2010, it's still the case now, is largely unregulated. There are no laws specific to IoT that are in force. There, well, let me I check that. The EU is putting some laws in the place. But generally speaking, most experts would agree that from a privacy perspective, the Internet of Things is self-regulated. So what does that mean? Yes, sir. Doesn't that just kind of fall under general, the reason the sign is general computing of all assets wouldn't fall under? No, there's, the there's, 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 and this is another presentation. As I said, I, I do a one on privacy and security. There are a whole, there are at least 20 or 30 different ways that I can tell you that IoT from a security and privacy perspective is different than I, general IT. Okay. But just accept that. And, yeah. So another committee that I sit on with the Internet of Things Association is their security stream. So that's the stream of the Internet of Things Association of Australia that's responsible for setting standards. They haven't really released standards yet. They have some working papers. Okay. But they haven't really released standards yet. There was, in the session yesterday, they had um, ACMA, you know, the, the, the industry body that's responsible for communications. And the gentleman got on and he talked about the fact, now, let me back up. Who here heard of that big DDoS attack back in December around IoT? Mm -hmm. so some of you. So for those, the benefit of you guys that didn't hear about that, there was a massive denial of service attack that happened in the U.S. Uh, back, I think it was in December, right, against DYNS, which is a referral service, which does work for Twitter and some really, really big brand names in the U.S. and Europe. So a DDoS attack was launched that lasted a better part of two days. And that DDoS attack was basically someone had found a, a software to hack into digital video recorders and use those as bots to launch the DDoS attack. Because the problem is when you get a device from Harvey Norman or JD Hi-Fi and you take it home, right, it usually has, what's the, what's the uh, user ID? Uh, right. And how many people do you think actually change that? <laughs> no one. So they launched this DDoS attack, which was massive. It had over half a million devices, DVRs, that were involved, and I think also uh, web cameras Webcam. that did this DDoS attack. It took them two days to fix it. The interesting statistic there is that they only deployed, apparently, something like 25% of the total devices that they were reckon were infected by this virus. So that was just a test. The guy was actually just testing his technology before he used that. So you quite good point. Now, to bring the story back to my story about ACMA, right? The gentleman from ACMA yesterday was saying that they monitor these things, and it, you know, they see something on the order of 150,000 devices a day that have some sort of breach that they have identified that have this particular problem or are susceptible to being had or have the issue, right? And so what do they do? They actually advise your telco, right, that, you know, by the way, this person has a router or some device on their internet based on their IP address that you need to advise them, some home user, right, that you have a problem. But what's the problem here? Anyone around a year or two ago when they had all these phone calls where people were calling up saying, I'm from Microsoft, your virus has been hacked, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your computer has been hacked, you have a virus, you need to fix it, and people were doing a hoax? Yeah, a lot of the problem is the telcos are going out trying to tell people this thing, and people are going, no, nah, it's bullshit. <laughs> right? So right now, in Australia, there are literally hundreds of thousands of devices that are liable to that same issue that you just pointed out. Right? So it's completely 
completely open, under control, right? Security is a massive issue in IoT right now. And there are very little standards. People are talking about putting standards in place. The US, they release some standards, but they're still provisional. No one has to follow them, right? So it's a huge challenge. Coming back to my point, right? Imagine a world where you come up and you meet someone, and within that 30 seconds, you found out 50 to 100 things about them. You know where they were last, uh, where they last had dinner. You know what their education is. You know what they're doing. You know, you know who their family is. You get all access to social media. You get all that access to all that information about that person. Does that make you a bit nervous? And tell me that it's not happening now. Okay. I actually uh, last week, and this is from a software perspective, I actually got a little thing from my Android device for. LinkedIn said, oh, basically, you're having a meeting with this person. Would you like to have some background information where you have something in common with them from LinkedIn? <laughs> it's great. It's awesome. It's awesome. All awesome. All but think about the social impact of that. You guys, everyone has secrets. Everyone has things that they don't necessarily want people to know about. Imagine if that's all out there in plain view. Right? So as Homer, you're sitting there, you're just basically naked on the internet. Everyone can see all this information about you relatively quickly. You guys couldn't discover two or three things about a person in 30 seconds, but in this new world, all this stuff is going to be made available almost instantaneously. So that to me is one of the bigger ways that IoT socially will impact people. There are other ways, right? So as I said, I call that social transparency, right? Everything you do, whatever you've done, wherever you've been, everyone can potentially know about it. That's the first thing I say, it's going to impact yourself. What, what is that going to do to people's relationships? <laughs> <laughs> it's not all of us on our own business, David. We realize that, you know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, think about that. Whatever you're doing. Yes, sir. So, why do you think that information won't be curated? So, I think the younger generation of people, particularly adept with things like Facebook, realizing that to some extent it was public, and sharing what they wanted to share. Why do you think that won't be possible with IoT? I mean, sometimes they get a little. I, I, I think I put a little bit more politically sensitive than David. But, uh, when, I owned, when I owned my own business, I was doing some digital marketing one day, and um, I was talking to my marketing person who was doing some digital marketing, and she put some advertisements on Facebook, right? And several people had sent her some really snotty comments back on Facebook. Their comment was along the lines of follows. Why are you putting advertisements on my Facebook and paying my fee? To this day, most you guys are IT professionals. You're largely educated in the, in the span of IT and probably social IT. Most day-to-day -day people think that they own what they put on Facebook. They think that they control. They don't realize the privacy settings of what they put stuff on Facebook. They think they own all that. They don't. As soon as you post anything on Facebook, Facebook phones it. Right? They open up everything to everyone, and unless you're really smart, you go around and lock everything down, right? you're already out there. So, honestly, David, I actually disagree with that comment a lot. I think most people aren't that educated, are not taking, because I'm actually doing some work that's very kind of test your own privacy in IoT and what people choose for privacy. There's something called a privacy paradox. If you ask anyone in the room, right, is privacy important? They go, yeah. Then you ask them, you know, do you change your password? Putting security of things in place? Did you do anything to improve your privacy? And people will say no. It's a privacy paradox. In other words, people will say something's important, but they won't do anything to defend it. Well, they'll sell it very cheaply. Well, they'll sell for like literally cheaply, like their personal information for like ten dollars. Something like that. That's surely part of the difficulty of the solution, right? So if someone has to remember the password, it all gets really tricky. So take the default down to the easy thing. So it's really about the effort of trying to complete that where the objective. But you, you also you also raise a good point. And the point is that most privacy these days is centered around the password concept, which requires some sort of human intervention. In the Internet of Things, there is no people. So having a password is what's that going to do? You can't. You have to have a process whereby the thing establishes its security itself. It's not going to have someone sitting there fixing the sensor. You know what I mean? So that makes the process even worse. My point to you is that this social transparency, people are going to have more visibility. It's going to be a challenge. Yes, we'll put processes in place, and people will come on to that, and some people will be more educated than others, but it will be a challenge. The other issue is just information overload. Every day we get overloaded by information. You know, I think I've got five different email accounts. 
get texts from different people and they're going on my pager because I'm in the RFS. Imagine all that data that people are collecting from all those IoT devices bombarding them with more information. And I think that's going to have an impact on people as well. The other thing that I like is um, locational opportunism. To me, this is probably one of the biggest um, both, both, both value points and also the challenges with IoT. Um, what's that Tom Cruise movie? Where he walks around and people, you know, flash AI. What's it called? Sorry? Minority, minority. Well, minority Report. That was the classic example of that, right? No matter where he's walking, they're figuring out, you know, where he is and they're marketing to him and, hello, Mr. Chong, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, you get confused because of his eyes were different colors and stuff like that. You say to yourself, oh, that's, that's the future, it's not happening. I don't know. I, I went into the um, QVD building into a coffee shop and my little Google account popped up and said, oh, by the way, you're in this coffee shop. Would you like to read it? Okay. Locational opportunism, right? The fact that you closer, and from a social perspective, these devices identify that you walk by this person, or you walk by this physical area, and it does something. Hopefully for good, but also sometimes maybe for bad. And the last thing is social instability or job loss. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that the implementation of IoT will change business models, and will change people's jobs, and will make a lot of jobs obsolete. Um, the one device, IoT device that I always quote that I talk about that you guys would have heard if you were here last month is I talk about the Amazon's Dash. Right, so Amazon last year came up with this little gizmo, it was about the size of this little clicker, and it was basically a button. And the whole idea was that you could put the button onto some sort of uh, consumer product, and when you ran out of that consumer product, you could press the button and it would automatically order that product for you. Okay, so there were three interesting things about that when Amazon came up with that. First one was within one to two weeks it was sold out. Extremely popular. Everyone wanted one. Right? It only cost like four dollars, so why not? Right? Issue number two, within about a week and a half, it was hacked. Someone changed it so instead of ordering the consumer product, would order a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> right? issue, issue number three, think about that business model. Instead of having to physically go to the store and talk to a shopkeeper to go buy your box of soap, you press the button and it showed up on your doorstep. If that was to take off, that would effectively eliminate retail commerce or shopfronts. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying that that is a potential where IoT, if you think about what IoT can do, you can eliminate a lot of jobs. Reducing cost, which is great, but also putting people out of jobs as well. So I think there will be a certain amount of social disruption with regards to IoT and that impact on people. Anyways, there's the concept of how IoT will impact people, and then from a social perspective, there's the concept of using how we integrate socially to design IoT. Okay, and the reason why I say that is if you think about it, there's actually a lot of similarities between IoT and people. We're all very different. In IoT parlance, we say we're heterogeneous, right? There's a lot of us, 20 billion things, but 20, 27 billion people, right? Um, we form complex relationships randomly and opportunistically. It can be the same, right? We generally work together. There are laws, but we generally work together based on a, a set of undocumented norms in terms of how we interact with other people. And largely, that's how IoT is operating now. So there's an argument that says you can talk about how people work together and apply that concept to IoT to solve architectural problems in the internet. <coughs> so I'm just going to give you a couple examples of how this could be uh, played out. First one is trust. Now, as we've, the gentleman pointed out, we were talking about passwords. The reality is, passwords imply people with IoT. It's largely irrelevant because there are no people. So how do you have all these devices connected to the internet? How do they even have form good connections? Right? How, 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 are, how are things going to be connected together? How are these devices going to trust each other? It's been a topic that's been talked about over the last 10 years. Are you going to sneeze? Almost. I'm trying to look at the line. Okay. Um, so how do you trust people? How do you trust? How do you guys trust people? I don't. You don't trust people. <laughs> you, you trust people based on experience. You may trust people based on referrals. So you might have someone who you trust, you trust that other person who says they trust you. Right? There's different ways that you can calculate trust. There's actually been a lot of work done on this concept of how do you develop networks that figure out how they're going to trust each other. In other words, instead of just randomly accepting that connection that lets you get into that you know, router or whatever that IoT device is, how is it going to establish that it's a trusted connection and that it's a proper one? 
right? And there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. You can um, do it based on history, you can do it based on, there's all these different um, mathematical models that have come up with that basically say if you have all these devices connected together, one device can essentially learn off another device in terms of what it should trust. Right? So that's an example of social concepts being applied to a problem. And trust, why is trust important? Because trust impacts security. Okay, so it's an example where a social concept is being applied right, to address the problem architecture. The challenge with uh, the issue of trust in IoT is there's two types of trust, what we call data collection trust and process trust. In other words, is the information getting right? The second is the device going to do the right thing. Problem solving. Does everyone accept that two heads are better than one? That if you work together as a team, you can solve the problem faster and more effectively? Not necessarily. There's been a lot of psychological studies that show uh, that it depends on people's honest assessment of their ability to solve the problem and then the information that getting the impacts to solve the problem. Anyone heard of this con concept of Dunning-Kruger effect? Yeah. Anyone seen it at work at work? <laughs> Dunning-Kruger effect it, it implies that people actually think they're smarter than they really are. And so therefore they do a lot of really dumb things. Okay. Anyways, um, given the sheer volume of IoT devices, there's been a lot of work that says if you're going to make them effective, you have to be distributed. In other words, these devices will have to work autonomously. They can't be all centralized. The central core doing all the decision making. They have to have some local capabilities. And one of the ways that you can take a look at that is actually having them solve problems. There's several examples of this. One classic example is um, a router has an issue and it has some sort of uh, performance issue or whatever. It actually goes out to other, other routers in the network and looks at what patches are actually applied that actually may have solved that same issue. So that's actually an example of good problem solving. There's lots of other examples that you can use where these devices can work together to solve their own issues, which will then improve reliability, right? will also provide performance improvements, and will also allow them to have that concept of the discovery computing, but I'll keep going along with them that time. So anyway, social internet of things. So here's my friend Homer again. Um, I would argue that it's the next evolution in IoT. Right? So IoT, IT were, you know, were people connected through the internet, and then they had social networks, so they were basically using the internet to do social things. Right? I would argue that IoT is devices connected to the internet, and then SIoT is these devices working together in social networks to provide value to us. And as I said, there's two ways of looking at this. This device is impacting us, and this way the device is socially, that concept can be applied architecturally to IoT design. A um, little call to action, this is my shameless advertisement. I, in my experience over the last several months, you know, I'm sitting in all these IOTA um, meetings and doing the research that I've been doing, this, the issues with regards to standardization and methodology and architectural standards and security standards around IoT, they just need to be resolved. I don't think the industry, the industry can solve them, but it's going to take them a long time to solve them. And it's just going to be through natural selection, right, the survival of the fittest. But if you look at IoT platforms right now, there's like 20 or 30 commercially available major ones that Gartner would talk about, probably in the hundreds of ones that you've built in business now. If there's not some sort of standardization, we're going to continue to have these security issues. And then IoT is going to cost a huge amount of money, and it's going to slow down the actual benefit that we get out of IoT, which can be huge. As I said, this is going to save lives, right? So I do think that there needs to be some more activity around setting some standards, particularly on the security aspect, so that we can all, all these IoT devices and all these consultants and all these systems that they're putting together can work a little bit better together, right? Have these sort of uh, set standards, because right now there really isn't. Okay? Um, and in summary, just finishing up. So, what are my conclusions around it? Well, first of all, I think I, if IoT is the next wave in IoT, then IT, then I saw IoT is the next wave in IoT. Um, there are lots of benefits of IoT, but the biggest challenge right now is, as I said, architectural heterogeneity. There's no standards, everything's not working together, the challenges. We're working out of the first IoT will no doubt, in my mind, have a significant impact in all your lives. Um, Remember this concept that when you put a frog in the boiling water, it jumps out, but if you put it in the water and it's boiling, and you store the turn the heat up, it dies. I kind of liken it to that. I actually think that there's a lot of stuff going on, and people don't realize it's happening with IoT, that once they realize it, they're going, oh my god, right. oh shit. Um, conversely, I do think that this concept of SIoT does provide one methodology for solving some of these architectural problems. It's not the only one. As we said, there's all kinds of different ways of fixing a lot of these things. You just need to pick one and pull out of it. I think either way, uh, governments and educated bodies need to establish some standards for this to really take off. All right, thank you for your time. Really appreciate that.